graphing quadratic equations. Here, we've learned how to graph them, but now we need to figure out or we need to analyze some parts of this graph. So, last time, we ended up with the graph and the important details of this function here, where it opens down, our vertex is at 1 8, our y-intercept is at 0 6, and we have two x-intercepts at 3 0 and negative 1 0. Now that we know this information, we want to analyze some other information about this image that we see here on the right. So, I read you this image to here on the right here. Okay. There are these three things that we want to come up with about this image. Is we want to figure our axis of symmetry. That's part F. Part G is we want to figure out does this graph have a maximum or a minimum and what is that maximum or minimum value. And in part H, we want to figure out where our domain and our range is. So, going back to the top, axis of symmetry. Where symmetry means where things match on both sides. So, we see this graph is symmetric from the left and the right. I can draw a line down the middle of this graph where if I folded it on that line, then my graph would match. So, this purple line that I'm drawing here is my axis of symmetry. So, I want to come up with the equation of that line. We learned in the linear video that the equation of a vertical line is x equals. So, automatically we are going to start with x equals the answer here. Now, we need to figure out what our x equals. Well, if I look at all of my x values on this vertical line, I know that all of these x values are 1. So, the equation of this vertical line is x equals 1. By the way, let me remind you that your vertex is at the ordered pair, or the point 1, 8. So, an easy way to remember the axis of symmetry is always going to be x equals, and then whatever the x coordinate is on your axis of symmetry. So, in this case, it's x equals 1. In part G, we want to figure out if our graph has a maximum or a minimum. If our U opens down, such as in this example, that means we have a high point on our graph, which means we're going to have a maximum. If our graph opens up, that means we have a low point on our graph, which means we have a minimum. So, in our example here, our graph opens down, so that means we're going to have a maximum. Not only do we have to figure out whether it is a maximum or a minimum, we have to figure out what that value is. So, we have to figure out what is the highest value on this graph. What is the largest y value on this graph? Well, that's going to be the y value of your vertex. So, in this case, our maximum is 8. In part H, we want to figure out where our domain and our range are. Well, when we were talking about functions, we very briefly defined these. Domain is all the possible x values on your graph. And when you're graphing x values, we mean the left and the right. So, if I looked at my graph, my graph would keep going forever and ever and ever on my left. So, my very most left x value on this graph is negative infinity. If I look on my graph, my graph is going to keep going forever and ever and ever on the right. So, my right value is positive infinity. Now, in interval notation, we know that negative and positive infinity, those are never have brackets, so our domain is going to be um, always parentheses. Now, since our parabolas open up and down, the domain for all of our answers is always going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. So, 
the last thing that we need to figure out is range. And range is all of the y values on your graph. And so y values go up and down. But you always want to start with the lowest one. Because you always say things from the smallest to the largest. So on this graph, this graph keeps going forever down in both directions. So my lowest y value on this graph is negative infinity. If, if I want to figure out what my highest y value is, that goes back to my maximum up here, which we found in part G. My highest y value on this graph is 8. Again, in interval notation, we have to figure out braces or brackets. Negative infinity is always going to be a brace. And 8 in this example is going to be a bracket because 8 is a part of the graph. It is included in this graph. So not only have we drawn all the important points on this graph, but we have analyzed everything that we can possibly think of. I'm going to stop this example, but I have two more examples that work through all of these steps. And it talks about what we would do if our graph if our equation is not in that form that we want it to be in right away.